Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. Recently, Edgar Wright has parted company with Marvel after their controversial decision to rewrite the script for Ant-Man. This comes as somewhat of a blow after Edgar Wright's seemingly meteoric rise to become one of cinema's most talented, kinetic and visual directors. And that's saying something in a CGI saturated world. But where did it all begin for this Wells native visionary? Well, let's dive in and see for ourselves. Born in 1974 in Poole, Dorset, but raised in the town of Wells, Somerset, the young Edgar Wright began filmmaking at a very young age, on an old super 8mm film camera, and later on a video camera that he'd won in a competition from a Saturday morning kids show. It was from these humble beginnings, over the course of the 1990s, that Edgar Wright's visual style began to take shape. This evolution was most evident in cop movie spoof Dead Right, named after the working title of Dirty Harry, and A Fistful of Fingers, a remake of one of Wright's earlier works under the same name. It was in 1996 when a 21 year old Wright was spotted by pre Little Britain comedy duo Matt Lucas and David Williams, leading to the short lived show Mash and Peas, where the titular duo, one Mr. Mash and Mr. Peas, would spoof particular genres of television. All of which served in good stead for what is arguably Wright's magnum opus in television, the ostensible sitcom Spaced. This show, actually Wright's second collaboration with Simon Pegg, the first being another short-lived comedy show called Asylum, superficially revolves around two flatmates pretending to be a couple to save on the rent. But underneath is a launching point for more pop culture homages, movie convention spoofs, and the formidable Peter Serafinowicz, who would go on to feature as Roman Day in Guardians of the Galaxy. Spitting out of space, high on cultural zeitgeist, and that particular herbal remedy that isn't quite legal, Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg took their first steps down the crimson road of blood and ice cream. Now, seeing as it's not something I'd really devote a whole episode to, I'm going to give my opinion of Shaun of the Dead right now. And I know it's about as far from a family film as you can get, but you know something, I'm gonna put this one into the House of Love. So, Shaun of the Dead, a story of friendship, love, loss, life, death, and undeath, at points ridiculous, touching, heartwarming, heartbreaking, terrifying, tense, and ultimately very British. Shaun of the Dead is actually a very clever movie, in that the zombie apocalypse, in reality a temporary inconvenience which lasts less than six months, isn't so much the catalyst to the end of mankind, but the catalyst to Shaun finally sorting out his entire life and becoming, if not a hero, then at least somewhat of an adult. Though ultimately only saved by the machinations of fate, and the intervention of another minor character, our hero is a better, stronger, more assertive person for the experience. Now, with regards to Hot Fuzz, I've already reviewed that in an earlier episode. You can go and check that out once I'm finished here. Which only leaves us with The World's End. Coming into this episode, The World's End was the only one I hadn't seen, and as a first watch, it's hard going. Gary is an unlikable protagonist, hardly the amiable bumbler that Sean was, or the hyper-competent city cop of Nick Angel, but is there anything compelling about this overgrown teenager? Definitely. And the nature of humanity? Well, yes, we are rebellious, we are fiercely individual, we won't just sit up and do as we're told, we'll cause chaos, we'll drink and fight and dance and screw, and generally behave like the hairless apes we are. Because that is what makes us human. That is what makes us, us. And yes, the film moves along at a good lick, and the tensions slowly play themselves out. But those tensions are what make it so hard to watch in places. Though really, that's just me. 
Or maybe it's because it's so different from the relationships of Peg Frost characters in other films. Either way, it's a bittersweet capper to a trilogy of thematically similar journeys, from aimless workaday drone, or workaholic super cop, or alcoholic screw up, in all cases, to some semblance of a hero. So yeah, I'd put The World's End, and thus the entire Cornetto trilogy, into the House of Love. In closing, charge up your glasses and drink to the king. I've been Funky Monkey, and if I wasn't afraid, I'd be much more famous than I am today. So long, folks. <laughs>